this is what a mother looks like after they've watched their baby be extubated, struggle to breathe, her little chest sucking in I, so much she didn't know it was possible, and the look of terror on her face for hours until they decide to re-intubate her. That's the Millie update. Um, just real tired and uh, traumatized. I'm not sure I can even go back in the room that she's in. And I really don't know what this means for Millie and her future. It sounds like perhaps we may be on a transplant route. Um, but I don't know when that we will need it, if we'll get to go home. Okay, so here's what's happened since Thursday, uh, at least from my understanding. On Thursday, Millie had a very, very, very long procedure. It was 10 hours. Her heart function was okay leaving the OR. Um, but it began to go downhill very quickly. The doctors debated putting her on ECMO because they weren't sure if she was struggling or if it was a qu equipment malfunction. ECMO is life support that basically does all the work for the heart. Um, and they did decide that maybe Millie was just tired and that it was time to put her on ECMO. While they were getting her ready, um, her heart began to slow and stop, and her surgeon had to literally reach into her chest and massage her heart, which is apparently the best kind of compressions. And then we waited. Her blood pressure was very high for days, um, and we were hopeful she would get to come off life support, but we were not sure. On Sunday, we were told that she had a small bleed in her brain. Uh, and they're unsure at this point if she has brain damage or if this will affect her permanently. On Monday, we had a good clamp trial where they stopped the ECMO um, and they decided it was time to take her off and she successfully uh, was taken off ECMO. On Wednesday, they decided to close her chest she did well. Both the procedure for removing ECMO and for closing her chest is surgical um, and dangerous. A surgeon does it. They began weaning her sedation and her ventilator, but whenever she came close, her blood pressure and heart rate would go very, very high. Yesterday, Thursday, a week post-op, they took her off the ventilator uh, in the hopes that the high blood pressure and heart rate were just an irritation. It didn't go well. Um, it was the worst thing I've ever seen. And I really hope that no parent ever has to experience that. We are being told that the reason they think it didn't go well is because they think Millie may have a stiff heart. Basically, this means that her heart is contracting and squeezing Good, but it's not relaxing when it releases its squeeze to let blood flow in. There's concern right now that Millie might not come off her ventilator, um, but we hope she will. If she can't come off the ventilator, she'll need a heart transplant um, or to have her glen taken down. Although her glen is functioning, the physiology of the glen does not work well with a stiff heart. Without her glen, she'll need a heart transplant. If she can come off the ventilator, uh, we're going to be watched very closely here at Sick Kids for a month or so, hoping that her heart function will improve. If it doesn't improve, she'll need a heart transplant. There's a glimmer of hope right now that Millie just needs to rest, that we've put her heart through a lot, 
and maybe she'll get better. As always with Millie, the odds seem to be stacked against us.